All right, so I built another Roma F4, you can see here from that extra frame that I got. Uh, this is the original one over here. And uh, I'm gonna talk about everything that I did with this new build in this video. But before I get into that, I do wanna talk about the new GPS cable that goes from the back of the, here, this GPS. This is in the back here and then goes to the flight controller. And Diatune uh, has actually come out with these a while back. I just haven't had time to make a video about them. It's basically got some shielding. Um, not exactly sure what the shielding is made out of. It's probably some sort of copper, you know, foil or something like that. And wrapping around the wires here, as well as uh, some sort of clear heat shrink that goes over that. So you can see you have four wires there, and I installed that on this one. On the new build, as you can see, the wire comes in here. It's in solder onto the flight controller here. And the I think it goes up top of the Vista now. I replaced the cabling, the original cabling on the original F4 with this new one. And you can't see it here, but it's, uh, yeah, it's installed there. You can kind of see it. It goes on top of the Vista. Plugs into the uh, same GPS. This is the uh, BN180 that I guess uh, everyone thinks that because it's smaller, you can't get good signals. And uh, it has to do with the fact that uh, the uh, unshielded cables that was being used before was running over the top of the Vista. And the Vista is creating a lot of RF noise that um, basically disrupts the signal that goes from the, the GPS, the signal that's received with the GPS and then transmitted over to the flight controller. And that's uh, why you're having problems. Now I would, uh, get maybe six satellites and it would take a pretty long time to get a lock. And uh, if I, if I moved locations, then I would have to sit there for a little while to reacquire the satellites. Sometimes if I was lucky, I'd get eight satellites on the old cable. I know that a lot of people have the same setup here and we're not getting any satellites and couldn't get any, couldn't get this GPS to work at all. And thought that maybe the GPS was a problem. I'm thinking that it's, probably a combination of the antenna being a little bit smaller here. This is a smaller sized antenna for a GPS, along with the cable not being shielded and that causing um, a number of problems with RF interference and not getting proper signal to the flight controller. So pretty inexpensive part. I'll link that down in the description. You can come up with race day quads. Uh, I think you get two in a package. So yeah, if you have other quads, uh, that have problems getting uh, good satellite signals and not getting, getting enough satellites and you probably want to pick up this cable. You can just cut off the connector if, you're, if your GPS is using a different connector, of course. And of course, they all use four wires. You know, they have power ground and uh, RX and TX. So after I've made the change, I can pretty consistently get uh, about 10 satellites up to as many as 14, depending upon where I'm flying. And it does, you know, kind of bounce around in that sort of range. So I'm having much better uh, signal and the GPS rescue works much better, of course, because you have a better lock with more satellites. You have uh, basically a more accurate picture of where you're actually located. So yeah, now uh, on both of these, I have no problems getting a quick lock within 30 seconds, 20, 30 seconds and get a lock. And um, I'm getting in the range of 10 to 14 satellites now with this new cable. So didn't want to talk about that. Make sure you guys are aware of that if you're having problems in want to get to work, then I would recommend going this route and uh, swapping out that cable. All right, so um, I think that's it for the old build. I, I think I mentioned I was using Express LRS on this one in a previous video, uh, but you can check that out if you want. So there's a new build here, essentially the same. I'm using Crossfire now here. I am using their new, uh, well, excuse me. I am using an HDLRC all-in-one Flight controller here says like the Zeus 25. Uh, I haven't made a video on that yet, but it's just a 25 amp 411 AC and a four flight controller. Uh, but the main thing about this build is that I'm using the new Toka 1505 motors here with the 2650 uh, kV, and I'm using the new Gemfan uh, F4019 three bladed folding propellers. So this whole setup here, I think weighs almost the same. And I'm using a shorter antenna here, this flywheel antenna. Um, but I'll just show you what the weights are build to build because uh, this one is in a 20 by 20 stack, two boards, 165 grams. And then this one here with the bigger motors, but, and also three bladed propellers 
is coming in at 164 grams, so 64.4. So actually a little bit lighter for this setup here compared to the um, basically the stock binder flies you can get with the two boards. Now, um, I know Diatone has a new all-in-one flight controller board here that you could use that I didn't use because I built this before I got that. And actually, I have that in a in their new 5-inch. Actually, this is going to appear in a future video, but if you guys are wondering, that's what it looks like there. You know, I, have even, I just literally got it today, so I um, haven't set it up yet. But if you just wanted a sneak peek, this is what's coming. It's basically, it's basically an F4... Um, I think it's called the L5. It's basically the F4 geometry in terms of the arms. It's little, and everything's been lengthened and, and made bigger, so it can fit 5-inch props. And it's got the 2004 motors. And these are um, the Toka 2004 1700 KV. So this is going to be running on 6S. But anyway, the Diatone does have a all-in-one you know, whoop-style flight controller. This is an F4, I believe. Um, yeah, you'll you get more information on this one later. But yeah, I know that you guys are wondering why I didn't build this one with that. It's because I built this like a month ago and I just haven't had time to make a video about it. So the way this thing flies now uh, with the bigger motor, yeah, it's a lower KV. This is, you know, the original was, um, what are these, 3,000 KVs, but these are only 1404s. So, you know, 1404s on this setup on 4-inch prop is really meant for efficiency. And I wanted to go for a build that was kind of more freestyle, a little bit more accurate, not necessarily for long range, although you could use it for long range as well. And obviously go with the three blade propellers to get a little bit more power because the KV is a little bit lower. So you get basically a bigger motor with more bottom end torque. It's got very good control on the bottom end, um, which I think is, is set up on this weight with three blade with a three bladed propeller does feel like a pretty decent acro fly. You see that here in the flight demo at the end. Now, um, I'm going to make a separate video about the folding props. These seem fine. They seem balanced. I'm not having any tuning issues or vibrations or anything like that. I, I have the two-bladed versions on, on the, um, the Airblade uh, Mini Transformer. That's also a four-inch. Uh, but I'm having some tuning issues in that one with a, with a fair amount of vibrations. I'm thinking that either I got a bad batch of those where they were unbalanced. Um, or I have some sort of a tuning problem or some sort of frame resonance problem because it just, I went from basically these two bladed, um, HQ props on that, on that frame to the two bladed, uh, folding props from jump van. And I get a lot of vibrations on that setup. So I'm going to save, uh, the talk about that for future videos. I, I have this one, the three bladed, I have the two bladed four inch, and then I have the three bladed three inch. And so I'm going to, sort of gather all those into a single video later. I can tell you that um, I haven't flown the three bladed three inch yet, so I have no idea how that flies at all. So you'll see that in a separate video. But for this one, you'll see in the flight demo, it flies perfect, you know, um, right out of the box. It seems all balanced. And I can't tell any difference between this one and just a regular three blade propeller and in terms of like its responsiveness. It seems completely fine just it doesn't I, do, I can't tell that i'm flying a folding propeller but you can see it's uh, folding and it's got a very nice compact footprint which i like so you can stick this into a small bag or something um and it's you know it doesn't look very intimidating if you happen to be flying at a park and some people come up and this compared to like a bigger five inch i think this one here flies like a five inch in, in my opinion it's not quite the same in terms of the weight because he is significantly lower than a typical five inch, but because of the the way it, it's so it's so light and the three inch or the three bladed propellers just seem to pr provide that pop. It does have that sort of sort of that same sort of feel, and you'll see that in the flight demo. You get to hear the, uh, the way the prop sound and everything. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if you are going to go for a more freestyle build on this uh, four inch frame, I would recommend going with an all in one. Flight controller board, you just save some weight there, just a single board, and then definitely these 1505 motors are way better for freestyle versus the 1404 motors. And yeah, if you can go bigger, like a 1606 or 1605 motor, maybe that might be pretty good. I'm thinking like on a four inch, I've even seen on some four inch, you can go up to like a 2004 motor on a four inch prop, and those are probably like that really good power to weight ratio as well. 
But I, like, I really like the way these 1505 motors feel. They just feel really locked in on the setup. Anyway, rambled on long enough. Um, probably see this again later in a future video. But if you have any questions, let me know down in the comment section. And here's the flight footage. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.